Now, I've been messing about with uh, this material here. This it's called Nymph Dub. Especially from a company called Semplify. Uh, I got this uh, kindly sent to me last week from Anne from the company uh, just to have a, a go with. Now, I'm a great fan of when I've got two colours basically mixed within like the core being darker than the, the amber coloured fibre. Like this works for me really well. And uh, obviously, when Cadis Amber, uh, or Cadis Pupa would be the first choice. Uh, this is uh, the fly I'm going to be tying here. Just using it. Just a leggy Cadis Pupa. This one. And uh, it's worked out really well. I love the colour combination. The, I know it will work extremely well. So, anyway, I'm going to show you how to tie it. The hook I'm using, this is a full and well hook. This is a check nymph hook in size 14. It's a babbless hook, it's, a, it's one of my favourite when it comes to doing Cadis pupa. Now, I'm going to weight it just by winding on some, this is a small copper wire which I put on a, a bobbin holder. Just to get the, the fly mid water. Uh, you can add lead to it, you could do it, you could put a tungsten bead on it if you want even, uh, to get it down, it's, it's up to yourself, depending on how deep you want the pupa. But in this case I want it mid water. Um, so basically I'm going to be down a, a layer of wire to this point here and then I'm going to come back up this just gets it down that wee bit quicker as you can see I'm going back down and back up just to get a shape that I'm looking for and when I'm happy I can bend and break away the wire the thread I'm using this is a, a uni in that brown an 8 -0. You wax the thread, to run it through the wax, just the once is enough. Needs a bit of oil by the sounds of things. So I'm going to take the thread to the copper wire, remove the waste, come back up, stop it about a mill or so from the eye. Now for the, the eyes, I'm using a, an island, this one here. This, so it's basically a fluorescent yellow nylon, £12, as you can see. Now it's very easy to get the eyes to get, a, to get yourself a pointed pair of tweezers just got these from uh, if I remember right I got them from my boots so I hold them looking round about maybe 45 mil now you, you want they're quite small so you, well, obviously the further down you get they go the wider apart they get so if you want to do bigger flies uh, I want it quite small so I'm looking round about 4 mil or so Either side, so just hold them, trim, trim it badly. So I'm just going to level it up. There we go, and then we basically melt the nylon to the side of the tweezers, like that. Come around to the other side, and obviously allow them to cool down. I'll we'll give it a blow. Now they're quite fiddly, so what I do is I keep them on the tweezers and I catch them with the thread with a couple of turns and let them go. Much easier to do that. Then position them with a figure eight. And there we are. Now, a lot of people say, does it make a difference? Well, it certainly, it looks wise, it certainly makes a difference. But if the light hits these wee eyes, they certainly glow, you can see them there. And uh, it comes to a nice aiming point. And the eyes are very pronounced on Cadis pupa, you do see them. Take my up a bit better. Just figuring it through just to get them to sit where I want. When you're happy, then you start to work your way down. Now I'm using the same nylon as a rib. So we've got it here. Now you can see I've actually chewed the end here. Reason being so that I can actually get much easier to grip when you're winding the thread on. Now I'm just catching it on the side as I wind down. Well, let me, you can use a pair of pliers instead of using your, your teeth. The dentist would prefer you to do that. Just wind down. And then we come back up. Just making sure it's secure. And you've got your nice caddis light shape. Now you want to be more, if it's, let the thread go, this side of the point rather than this side. And I'm going to catch in the wool, so we've got our 
Maar wel, er wat nymph tap. Vertikaatje en een weduin. Dat is een tijd. At this point, and then we work our way up, and then wind up. I mean, it's really it's quite an easy tying. It's not. It's getting the proportions right. Now, sometimes I get them wrong, so I've got to admit that. If you get a nice shape, the fly just looks totally different. So we catch this in, get it nice and tight, so we can then trim away. The waist, keep that for our next fly. Before we get any further, I'm just going to tidy things. Just see where I am. And then what we do is bring our rib up. Quite close turns, nice and tight. Just checking where we are. Now you could bring some of the, the, the fibre out, but I prefer to do it once I've wound up. Nice and straight. There we are. Make sure your thread's at the point where you can catch it in, so I'm bringing it back up. Now, what I do is catch it on the side, just keep, always try and keep the thread as tight as you can. Good five or six turns, and then start to work. I pull it down, what I'm doing is I'm pulling it down to keep it on the side of the, the shank. And then I'm going to trim it away. Again, tidy up. Now I'm going to put wax on the thread again so it keeps the thread turns really tight. Now, what we can do now is get the Velcro. We can then use that to brush out the amber fibre. Gives it a nice pupa light look. Just checking it. They're going to be too, the ones that's too long, take them away. You can trim it away as well, it's up to yourself. But that there just stands as a lovely body. Uh, it just looks apart. Once that's wet, the darker brown will certainly show through. You've got the fluorescence of the, the nylon and then the amber. A good colour, it's good colour combinations. You really, you can't go far wrong. Now, for the back, I'm using this scud back. This one here from Airline. It's just the brown. So I've got a length ready out. Just catch that on the top. Make sure it's right on the top. And tie it in. Make sure it's secure. Looks fine. Now I'm halfway down there. Let's leave the thread there. I'm doing tying some dubbing. I'm just using a. This is uh, a natural dub, tan dubbing. Just a natural bleached and dyed by looks at uh, get this from Wopsy, there's two or three companies do a natural dub. So I'm gonna lightly dub it onto the thread. The reason I'm halfway down is because I basically want to wind up to the, the back and then come through it with the thread and some of the dubbing, which basically tightens it up, just slightly tightens it up. I still want it quite reasonably loose so that I can bring out some of the fibres. Now we've got a good mill or so behind the the eyes we're going to tie in some legs there you see so give yourself room and then I get the back to the velcro and I'm going to brush down from the top either side of the shank the dubbing just to show you what it's like that gives it a wee bit more leg like just encourage that to come to the back if there's one or two fibres that are destined to head towards the eye, you can actually take them off. Just trim them away. You could pull them back with the thread, but some are a bit stubborn at times. Just check, that looks okay. Now, we've got the pre-knotted legs. Now, you could use a, a double knotted leg to sort of slightly thicken it up, or you could use just a, a normal sort of leg, uh, single knot it. Now I'm just going to use the single knot that just to show you. I'm going to put three either side of the shank. So these are just pre-knotted pheasant tail legs. You get them from vineyards. I'm just running my fingers through. This tightens the knots up. 
it's not always tight. They have obviously got six there, hopefully. And I can't count, so I need another one. Again, just run it through your fingers. Tear it away. And the tips have lined up. And then what I'm going to do is offer three down either side of the shank. So what I'm, I'm just separating them. Sometimes it's easier to come further up the stem and separate them rather than try to separate them near the, the tips because they're like tangled up with the, the knots. Just get them to sit the way I want. You can roll them in your fingers just to get them to lay right. Now I'm going to tie these basically on the top, not too long, keep it the legs really within the, the, the shank. A couple of turns here, just to position them. Now I'm more likely to put them slightly more on the side rather than right underneath. It's going to be quite look, that's fine. When you're happy with that, you can tighten up. Trim away the waist. What I'm going to do here is just a tiny bit of dubbing, just to tidy that area up. Same dubbing I used. Just come in. There we are. That's fine. And you take your thread to the front. And then what I'm going to do is, obviously, if any fibres I can see, I can pull them back with the thread. And then the head is the thread, so... So we quite like that. That's fine. Then we can get my scud back, my scud back, stretch it towards the eyes. Just to, you want the thread to be right at the eye of the hook, stretch it so it tapers. Then I'm going to show you this. I'm going to come in with a couple of turns first though. Right all the back, you can see there, and it's tapered at the eye because obviously it's tapered towards it. Now you can put horns in at this point, which is what I normally do. So I've got some dyed yellow bronze mallets sitting on my desk, so use the natural if you want, just bring out two fibres. Just make sure the tips have lined up. Don't want them too long. Just like them by the back of the hook and tie them on the top. Now I've kind of missed them, but basically what I'm going to do here is I've still got the fibres within my fingers, I can grab the waist ends and bring them up. As long as there's a couple of turns in there. They should sit for you. Now what I'm going to do then, catch, do a turn at the back of the eyes. You can see how they're sitting. Fold this back, do another turn. And then we can trim away the waist. We can bring this over for the, the head. Give it a stretch, a turn. You can see that there. And then we can whip finish. I like to put some varnish on with thread at this point to lock in the whip finish. And one, two, three, four, there's plenty. Tighten up. You can trim away your thread. Now we're just going to trim this. You can basically, you can have it the, this as long as you like, short, it's up to yourself. I'm going to keep it quite short, so I'm just going to trim it there. I want to make sure I get that nice that taper towards the eye. You can thicken up the head here. Uh, have a wee quick look. Now that's fine. That's, that looks okay. And then we can varnish. I just varnish the head, make it nice and bright. You can do it in the top and underneath. So there'll be a couple of coats of varnish would make it nice and shiny. You may catch the odd fibre I think I have there. It's not too bad. You can brighten the eyes up, I'm just going to clean them a wee bit. Make sure the, the eye of the hook's clear. And there we go, and that's the carriage paper. This is, this is the material I'm using, I'm just messing around with it, see what it's like. It is a good uh, material, it seems to sit really well, it's got a nice colour which you're always looking for uh, when you're tying flies and that has a nice blend a reasonable pattern to tie it comes out not bad uh, it's not the best one I've tied but it looks okay so I hope you enjoyed that and that's uh, Caddis Pupa tied with the Nymph Dub <laughs>